Pat Robertson recently talked about the idea of fighting climate change in response to some of the newest reports from the IPCC about the impact of climate change and the idea that we can use policies to fight it. Now, some of those policies would include, of course, cutting emissions and switching over to alternative fuels. Now, the IPCC and 97% of climate scientists say that we must do something and we must do it soon. However, Pat Robertson disagrees and believes that, no, we shouldn't do anything about it. And watch him explain why. It's a body blow to American industry, and it's a body blow that's a socialist agenda. It's part of the uh, playbook of uh, Obama's mentor, uh, and this is the way that they want to uh, destroy America. It's not uh, something that's set up to really curb global warming. How, how can you curb emissions when the Chinese are pouring more and more about one, what do they say, about one a week, a new coal plant comes online in either China or India. <clears throat> They're taking the coal from America, putting it in their plants and pumping it into the atmosphere. Well, we live in one globe, and so the United States cuts back on its energy, and it causes the middle class to have to pay more for electricity. What have we accomplished? All we've done is weaken our country. And that makes no sense at all. But it is high on the agenda of the radicals who want to destroy America. It isn't high on the agenda of those who really care about what goes on in life. Um, yeah, so Pat Robinson's statement. Pat Robinson is a crazy person. Let me just point that out there. And his global conspiracy, crazy person stuff. But... One of the things that we were talking about before the show is that he's kind of technically right on a certain aspect of this. If the United States of America stopped using coal tomorrow, and we we do burn coal cleaner than other countries because we're a richer country and we care more about pollution and all that. But if the United States stopped burning coal tomorrow, then we would essentially cut the global demand for coal to a very, very low amount without changing the, the supply then coal would become the cheapest source of energy, and that coal would be moved over to Chinese and Indian plants and burned in dirtier conditions. Like, that that part of it, he's true. The fact that this might be a crazy conspiracy or all this nonsense is, is, is the nonsense part of it, but that is technically true, is that you're moving coal from, dirtier, from cleaner plants to dirtier plants. That being said, we actually have cut coal consumption and we have cut emissions in this country, uh, by by um, by the growth of the natural gas industry, so like alternatives are better than banning and restricting, especially if nobody else is going to ban and restrict. So if he made that point, Pat Robinson would have been a hundred percent right. Until uh, bec uh, uh, until he reaches that point, he's at about thirty six percent, and that's my fair p to Pat Robinson point. Attack me now, guys. Well, first of all, like, it's um, coal, and it's currently using, oh, it's using up well over 1.3 billion tonnes. Um, I can't find, I've only just quickly looked for recent statistics. But, you know, he's saying that, you know, stopping using coal in power plants in America will somehow destroy America. It's going to hurt the middle class. Admittedly, it might have a very short term impact, but if you stop using coal, then you have to replace it with something else, and that something else is going to be renewable energy. You invest in renewable technology, you create jobs, you save the planet, you, I mean, China can't use coal forever, it's in the long run, it's going to make America a stronger country, it's going to be better positioned for the future, economically and energy-wise as well. So his whole, just his whole argument, you know, kind of the radical, just the those catchwords of, you know, socialist and... Like he's, I mean, you summed up, he's a crazy person. He, no one should be paying any attention to his views on absolutely anything. I don't, I don't know why people even watch his channel, apart from people like us who watch it just to mock him. Yeah, I, I excellent. Don't if, uh, I don't know if Pat Robertson knows this, but we have this thing called The Sun. <laughs> we can get energy from it if we just maybe do a little investment into it. I, I don't know. Look, his argument sort of breaks down to it's socialism and it's going to destroy America if we don't burn all of our coal. Okay, so so in Pat Robinson world, if we don't 
uh, burn up all the coal here and pollute the world, then someone else is going to do it. So that makes it so that it's okay. So it, it kind of breaks down to we're having a contest of who can fuck up the world first. And currently, I mean, right now, we're not number one. China is actually number one in emissions. They, they have more emissions than we are. But we're in a very close second. And so if you want to talk about China, let's talk about China. Do you know that China actually subsidizes solar energy far more than America does? Like that's something that a, a lot of people don't know. And that's why – and, and so since China subsidizes so their solar energy so much, it's actually a lot cheaper. And so that's kind of why you hear idiot right-wingers claim that, oh, my God, solar energy is just – it's failing in America. It's, it's you know all this stuff. It's not going to work. Look at Solyndra. Well, no, they, they actually haven't failed. It's just most of those companies under the DOE loan program actually did make money. But because we don't subsidize it just as much as China, we're not making that much money off of it as much and so it's it's not as economical for the businesses to do it they're not going to make as much of a profit because the government isn't subsidizing it you know the germans are are heavily subsidizing the chinese are heavily subsidizing and we're just we're just not yeah i got i got i got to call kind of nonsense on that yeah they're the companies are being sustained by the subsidies that's that's true but solar energy is 0.3% of the energy in the world like point it could, three. It could be much, much more. That's one third of one percent with billions of dollars from the Chinese. Billions right, of dollars. Sean, I, I got. I've heard enough. I got. I got to cut Sean off here. Okay, because he's he's made one argument that like at least follows logically in a world where you get to create the data around the argument. Uh, then Pat Roberts made an argument that doesn't follow logically. And then Sean just jumped in with another one. So the reason why we should keep burning coal is because we're burning coal. Solar doesn't make up that much of the energy in the world, therefore we shouldn't use solar. No, that's an idiotic argument, man. That's the whole reason to get off coal, because we have these renewable resources that are getting more and more efficient and working better and better and better. That's why we need to invest in them so that they make more of the energy. They don't do it well. Like The fact that we're doing a horrible thing is not a reason to keep continue doing a horrible thing. Now, so I'm sorry I had to play bust nuts with you there, Sean. Now I want to uh, to be a little more uh, 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 tactful and <laughs> I bust you on this one here. Um, so as usual with a libertarian argument, y you have a position based on a principle, uh, on an a priori assumption about the way you know uh, the way that things work, and in this world where you know your theories are what's going on. And hey, within the the the, the laws that you've got established, you made a sound argument like if. We stop using coal, then there's less competition to buy up that coal. China's going to get it at a better price. Here's why that argument breaks down, and then I'll go on to Pat's because it's the least substantive <laughs> of the arguments so far, even though it's the one that we're you know quote unquote covering. Um, one, we don't know how much coal China is burning for energy. We know how much coal China consumes. We know how much they import and how much they produce, and we'll get into that later. But we don't know how much of what China uses in, in, for their coal is going into powering energy and how much of it is going into steel production because China is also a huge steel producer and a lot of it may be going into that. And, and hey, that's still a carbon intensive process. I don't want to belittle that, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is burning coal for energy. Now, the reason why Sean's argument, which makes sense when you hear it but completely falls apart in light of data, uh, falls apart is because China, like, yeah, they burn a ton of coal. They're also the world's largest producer of coal, but not even in the top five of exporters of coal. They burn a ton of coal that they're making themselves. So what everybody else does with coal is not going to affect their price of coal that much. Now, I do want to be fair. They are also the largest importer of coal just because the sheer mass of what they they burn is, uh, you know, they're so big, but, like, the amount they import versus the amount they produce themselves is, is, is doesn't even compare. They um, China, uh, let's see, let me get their production numbers here. It's forty six percent of the to of the world's total production. Yeah, coal. they produce three point five billion tons and import one hundred and seventy seven million. That puts them at number one in production and uh, and importing. But you can see just because they're number one in both, there's a huge disparity in how much they produce and burn in their country versus how much they import. So it's 
Uh, so there's that. Um, and, and like like Jeff said, you know, like they're moving towards solar too. They are burning a ton of coal. Uh, because they've got this huge population, they don't have the infrastructure, you know, to support as it becomes a more wealthy population. And coal is the quick fix in the middle because it's where the it's the one that's easiest to deploy. Um, but they they're looking to deploy the other ones. And uh, uh, if just in closing, I want to actually address Pat Robertson's issue and why it's so stupid. And some liberals might be get mad, might get mad about this. You know, here uh, uh, since 2008, we've had a lot of G whatever number. You know, you want to call climate meetings where the world, you know, or Kyoto protocols and stuff like that, where the world was going to get together and we were going to hammer out this climate change thing together, and we were going to pass resolutions and all honor them, and everything was going to be great going forward. And of course, nothing's come from any of them. And uh, here, where liberals might get mad is like it's not the Koch brothers sabotaging those because uh, they don't have to. Um, well, I guess they are by proxy because they're the ones pushing the coal industry. But the reason why those meetings haven't gone anywhere is not because the industri the, uh, the big uh, uh, Western countries are, are fighting each other. It's because India and China are coming to those meetings and saying, hey, you guys are trying to impose really strict CO2 regulations. You guys developed and modernized without those. Why should we have to have those in place? And so what Pat Robertson is saying is we should continue to make that argument valid and continue to burn coal ourselves and to, to compl be complete hypocrites and tell China and India they need to clean their act up without cleaning it up ourselves. And that's a ridiculous, idiotic point. Okay, so I want to make two points. One, I never made the argument that we should burn all our coal so the Chinese don't. And two, the idea that because China produces its own coal that that doesn't affect the global coal market that's like the ridiculous energy. It doesn't affect the price that China buys it at because they're, the, the but, all the government has to do is make this nationalize that industry, which China has a history of doing. Yeah, and they can set the price at whatever they damn well please. But even even if the United States was a hundred percent energy independent, it wouldn't really change the price of oil that much because because it's on a global market. So. And also, I want to point out that one thing that you were right about them importing coal, and we don't know how much they're burning. There's actually like piles and piles of like coal just stacked up across China that because they're importing like not to a market demand, they're just importing to import. But to get to the point, look, if you if you cut if the United States completely cuts off their coal consumption right now, like artificially cuts it off by the government, not by natural gas passing it or or nuclear advancement, or solar advancement, or whatever. No wind advancement, because that's impossible. But if they stop, then you're going to drive down the price of coal, and other countries are going to consume that coal while it's cheap in the short term. You right? just argued the exact opposite, I though. Know, I understand, said, I understand, us, I understand. us getting out of oil won't affect the price of oil because it's traded globally, but no, coal, no, no, we get out of no, nothing, no, coal no. I, said, I, said, I said the myth of energy independence was what you were saying, that China produces so much coal that they're, co that they're close to coal independence. Energy independence is irrelevant, but if you artificially cut off half, because I think that, it's... That was not the argument I made, man. You're, you're whatever. different. This is Sean time. Um, then that won't affect. So my point was is that Pat Robertson was slightly right about that point. That was it. I wasn't advocating for him and all that. And secondly, if the Chinese want to subsidize solar companies, they totally can. They can go for it. We'll reap the benefits. It's you don't. Be, you. I got news for you. You don't benefit from your government subsidizing an industry. That industry yeah, benefits. You, yes, you do. You, you can you can benefit tons by a government subsidizing your industry. Case in point, the oil companies. Back when they needed to be started up, they had huge subsidies, and look at where they are now. And like the point that I was going to raise is that you know, no no one is making the argument. What Robertson think is is what people are saying that we should just stop using coal tomorrow. Just turn off all the all the coal plants immediately. No, of course not. That'd be ridiculous. Just over a five year period, ten year period, twenty year period, you slowly wean off those companies and you invest in solar power, you invest in nuclear power. No one's saying just completely cut off the flow of, you know, coal energy. That would be a ludicrous argument to make. You've got to slowly wean it off. I I just want to finish uh, what I was talking about. Uh, China too. We see a lot of the effect of China burning that coal and maybe this is why they're subsidizing or at least one of the reasons that they're subsidizing solar energy so much is because stuff like, for example, a recent report in The Guardian states that 
half of all Chinese groundwater sources are polluted. Beijing has an air toxicity twice the limit deemed safe. Okay, this is this is what people like Pat Robertson, the other right wing drill baby drill that's burn all the coal Neanderthals, want to turn America into. That's essentially what they're advocating for. Let's burn all the coal before everybody else does, and we're turned into China. That's that's sort of what's going to happen. You're going to get all of this pollution. I remember uh, reading about things where, with unregulated industry, being able to light our rivers on fire, and that's sort of where we're going back to. And and it's even going to get worse because of China and India both burning all this all this coal. Plus America still being the second largest polluter in the world. It's five percent that uses twenty five percent of the the energy, something like that. Yeah, and we, we put out the second most emissions. That's pretty fucked up, man. And and all of this is is so that, you know, uh, uh Pat's right wing friends in the energy sector can make an, can make an extra couple of bucks. Fuck that. I just want to point out that coal could power Pat Robertson's diamond mines for decades. I, I thought about going there. I'm glad you did. <laughs> I, I was wondering if maybe Pat doesn't have some secret coal mines now that his diamond mines have been exposed. Hey, that's that's a that's a good that's a good theory. But hey, can, can uh, to to get back on topic, um, I don't have the context of the whole clip. Like, hey, he's talking about President Obama's mentor. Is he talking Bill Ayers? Like, who is he even? Saying there, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna guess Saul. That's that's Saul the uh, favorite, something like that. Okay, because I was I was thinking he was going for you know Bill Ayers and the whole like I was like you know because Bill Ayers has since come out and declared Obama to be a war criminal <laughs> who should be tried. Uh, so I was yeah, like, I don't just, just the fact that he's all like it's a socialist plot for Obama to destroy America by not burning coal. Yeah, how does how does replacing a, a for-profit coal industry with a for-profit renewable industry? How is that socialism? I don't understand. But it's just it's just just flat out like at least Sean's point was based on like facts that don't exist but made sense. This he's just, Pat Roberts is just he's just being he's being Pat Roberts, man. <laughs> 